Hello and good evening. Welcome to Holy Cross this gorgeous Saturday. And uh, I'm um, Brad Thomas. I'm a member here and just get to help out periodically. So it's my pleasure to help out along with our seminarian, John. And um, not a lot of announcements. You have the printed messenger bulletin extension that I encourage you to look at that. Um, and so let's go and begin with the opening song, Glory to God Forever. Yeah. 
stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. O oh Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Uh, you make divine spirit faithful to you of one will. Grant that we may love what you have and desire what you promise. Change 
are found through Jesus, who lives in you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 6 and 7. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists rose up against the, he- against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Perimenus, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did, you, did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged. They ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. The epistles from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of rumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our song.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How do you value a person? How do you measure, quantify the value of a person? You know, do you base it on their traits or their uh, attributes or, or their abilities? Or maybe the potential that they have? Um, perhaps it's what you do for somebody or what they do for you. I'm thinking tomorrow's Mother's Day, so how would you determine the value of a mother? For her children, especially when they're young, she's of great value. And yet, as they grow, does the value diminish? And what about people who are not her children? How do they value her? You see, valuing people does affect how we relate to one another and is affected by how we are related. So we want to make sure we understand God's perspective as opposed to the world's perspective on the value of people because of this effect. For example, there's a common view outside of the church that we are the product of this long evolutionary process, that we exist by chance. And... Um, so we just happen to be here, and, and as humans, we're on the leading edge of this evolutionary development, and that's a common worldview. And consequently, the culture that we're in puts great value on people who seem to have superior abilities, superior attributes, and they put a lower value on people who seem to be inferior. The premise is, after all, the strong will get stronger, the weak will, will die off. And I suspect this is why so many people are driven to demonstrate their value to one another. They want to prove themselves, perhaps out of pride, perhaps out of fear. And so there's this competitive tendency in our culture to compare physically, mentally, socially, whatever, all kinds of ways. And as prevalent as this worldview is in our culture, that is not God's view, thankfully. This is not the way God says things are. God has revealed to us that we're not here by chance. He's told us that he made us. He's made everything that we know. We exist, we live, because he wants us to. We have been made, and we've been made fearfully and wonderfully. He's known us before we were born. He's carefully knit us together in our mother's womb. He's made us with unique attributes. He's given us distinct talents and abilities. God also tells us it's not good that we are alone, even at the beginning. He said it's not good. So he's designed families. We are born into families, born with a mom and dad. Ideally, you know, mom and dad and, and child, they're, they're together because mom and dad protect and nurture and provide for the children. And the children obey and honor mom and dad. But yes, families break down. But even when the biological families break down, God brings us into his family, his church. He does this through the waters of baptism. And so as Christians, we are family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're family. And yes, this family too can be difficult to kind of maintain and because we're sinners. Our baptism has made us holy. It's made us righteous by the blood of Christ. But we carry within us this sinful flesh, this rebellious nature. And we're also in this culture, this sinful world. So we are susceptible to the influence of, of other worldviews and, and from our own desires and we just want to pay attention to what's coming that's not from God. Because if we follow the way of the world, we might look around and see individuals, not family. We might start comparing. 
might start to rank. We may see ourselves as better than one person and feel proud about that. And at another time, we may look at another person and feel inferior, discouraged, lesser. We may think something wrong with us. And so we can fall into this trap of thinking that we have something to prove our value as an individual. We begin to compete. And the competition may cause you to put yourself in a good light, maybe better than you deserve, maybe even presenting yourself as something you're not. And you may also put others who have the attributes that you want in lesser light, maybe to diminish them. Well, I'm bringing this up because Peter apparently observed some of this in the early church. I I invite you, if you want, to open up to 1 Peter chapter 2 because I'm going to read the verse leading up to the printed out text you have. Because in that verse 1 of 1 Peter 2, he says, So put away all malice, all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. And leads into our verse. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk away malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk. The pure spiritual milk is the unadulterated word of God, not mixed in with the world's ideas of what is wise and good. God's word is for his family, for you and me, his children. This is what we need for our health, for growth us together and so he gives us his word and we receive it here at church we hear the wonderful words of forgiveness in the absolution we hear about jesus christ crucified and risen for you in our sermons in our liturgy in our hymns and songs we recognize that in christ we have life and the value is beyond what the world can even comprehend. Because Jesus is the one who God sent. And Jesus willingly came into this fallen world, this dark world, full of sin, in order to save it. Out of love, he came here to give himself. And he was rejected. Man in his pride cast him out as it says, brutally, violently, the very Son of God was cast out, and he destroyed him. This one, most valued by God, was treated as though he were the least. And yet Jesus willingly submitted him to this torturous death on the cross. And it was in this that he accomplished what he came to accomplish, to restore man, to restore creation, to fulfill God's plan of redemption since the foundation, to fulfill all of the scripture, the law, the prophets, and all this he did in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. And everything changed. Everything changed. Light and life returned in Christ into this creation. So Peter, writing to baptized Christians, he wants them to know this and to live according to this wonderful news, this good news. Dear children of God, this is also for you here at Holy Cross tonight, this good news that God has for us. This is why we're here, to receive this spiritual pure milk like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And we have tasted that the Lord is good. And we return. In Peter, in this text, he continues, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by man, in the sight of God, chosen and precious, 
you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house together, alive, supporting one another, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're all part of this priesthood, but there's no need for an atoning sacrifice that was made once for all. Jesus is that atoning sacrifice. So the sacrifices that we get to make as this royal priesthood is praise and thanks and prayer and all that we do in faith in the life that he's given us in our vocations as son and daughter, as mother, as father, as co-workers, neighbors. This is what we do in this holy priesthood. And we do it when we gather here and we do it out in our lives in this world. And we're built up by this word. Part of this house, living stones, founded on Christ, where the Holy Spirit dwells. Well, the end of this epistle text says, you are a chosen race. Now, he's not talking to individuals. These are all collective. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You were lost, but you are chosen. You were cut off, destined for that eternal condemnation. But now you are part of the royal priesthood, serving the king. You were part of this world, but now you've been set apart. You've been made holy in Jesus. Now, outside of Jesus, the value that the world gives you might be based on abilities, <coughs> possessions, what you can do for them. But you're God's possession. Your value is immeasurable, precious. The precious blood of Christ is what you are worth. Your true identity, the one that God says, the one that God declares, is in Jesus. We're not independent. We're not, we're not independent, kind of do whatever we want. We're part of this building. Not this building. I mean this holy living, spiritual building. Supported, in, interconnected, active. We're serving together the king of kings. There's no need to compete. There's no reason to uh, compare, nothing to boast about except Christ. And in him, we're indispensable. Yeah, our culture can influence our worldview, but we can influence the culture. When we understand ourselves rightly, we do. Again, he said, okay, you're a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is what we do. Proclaiming the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness here into his marvelous light. This is what we do in our lives as Christians, as his holy nation. Yeah, you are a chosen race, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. That's who you are. That's who you will be on the last day. This is who you are now in Christ. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess together our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray to our Father in heaven, who has made himself known to us and his Son. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be the way to heaven by his death and resurrection. Comfort and enliven us with Christ, the truth, in your word and sacraments, that we might rejoice in him our life both now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy... Almighty God, your Son honored you and became obedient even to death on the cross. Hear our prayers on behalf of children and youth. Provide them good and godly homes where they might be trained in your ways. And give them thankful hearts that honor their fathers and mothers as your servants. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, bestow your grace on all the nations of the earth. Especially we beg you to bless our land and its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to dwell among us, and let mercy and truth, righteousness and peace ever, everywhere prevail. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, even as you make your Son known to us through your holy word, so you also make known much about your creation through discovery and education. Bless all educators and the students entrusted to their care. Give them good things to speak, ears ready to hear and learn, wisdom to use that knowledge according to your will, and faith to trust you when answers remain a mystery. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you provide men of good repute to serve so that the apostles might devote themselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. Bless congregations with godly pastors and lay leaders who are willing to shoulder burdens for the blessing of your people and the spreading of your word. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as you remember us in, in our living and our dying, remember all those who cry to you in need. Especially, Lord, we lift up Doris, Dana, Pat, Marie, Dorothy, Bob, Doris, Nancy, Dolores, Herbert, Tom, Jeff, Elijah, Beulah, Haley, Marilyn, Norma, Gina, Joe, Barb, Dennis, Telsia, Hal, Grace. Also, Lord, we lift up Diana, Dakota, Tom, Jim, Nancy, Chris, Harper, Norma, Charlene, Garrett, Gary, Elaine, Kelly, Leona, Eloise, Peggy, Elfrida, Alicia, Margaret, Amy, Mike, Ron, Mona, Bill, Natalie, Clara, Craig, Steve, Dulce, and Karen. Strengthen and deliver them according to your will and grant them confidence of your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, and in Christ you have made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for your own possession. Preserve your people in the one true faith, 
and grant all who come to the supper this day might also do so with repentant hearts that thankfully receive your son's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Most holy God, we give you thanks for all those whom you have called out of darkness and into your marvelous light. With thanks for all the saints whom you have gathered to yourself throughout the ages, continue to enlighten us by your grace until we join them before your throne. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated as we gather the offering. Please stand. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Who art in heaven. Thy will be done. It is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We finish with our closing song.